Hello everyone, it's Tess from the Arty Crafty Place here and I have for you a brand new spring printing project inspired by cow parsley. So here in the Oxfordshire countryside, the cow parsley is in full bloom everywhere you look. Driving to work and walking the dogs, every hedgerow and side of the road is full of beautiful full bloom cow parsley and I was so inspired as I absolutely love our elegant cow parsley printing block and I thought this would be the perfect time to have a go with a new printing project and also try something a little bit different to what I normally stick to and have a go at printing onto darker fabrics. So I hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I love printing it. I have decided to print onto navy so we've got these lovely flat zip pouches in a few different sizes in navy which I'm going to print and then I'm also going to print a navy tote bag. Now this is actually a tote bag that we've indigo dyed. As you may know we run indigo dyeing workshops here in our Oxfordshire studio but we also sell an indigo dyeing kit so you could try dyeing your own bag. This is just one of our calico tote bags but we also have for sale on our website a selection of navy tote bags which are lovely to print and you can see some photographs of them printed up on the website so if you don't have any indigo or any kind of other dyes you can just print onto a plain navy tote bag. Now first of all let's talk about paints that I'm going to be using for this project. Now because we're going to be printing onto dark fabric we're going to want to use a different paint to normal. So when you're printing on dark fabrics, you need to use a fabric paint which is specifically for dark fabrics so that the colour comes up really nicely. Here I printed, on this little piece of test fabric, I printed using our leafy green and our solid white paint, which both really are for dark fabrics, but the paint still wasn't strong enough to show up in the way that I wanted it to. So I then opted to try our So Soft paints and this came out much better. So these are the, going to be the paints that I suggest using for this project. So I'm going to be using our Hauser Light Green So Soft paint and our White So Soft paint. And these have just got a really high pigment so when you're printing onto the dark fabric like my navy blue, the colour comes up really nicely and that's what you want. You want it to be nice and bright and vibrant. And I'm going to show you some tricks to make that I use to make my prints look even brighter and kind of come to life more. But you can really see the difference here with these two pieces of test fabric that the So Soft came out a lot better. But if you have any paints at home, it's certainly worth trialling. Our textile solid white is normally suitable for dark fabric, so you could try mixing that with other colours, especially if you're happy to have some more subtle tones, and just see what you, you get, see the results that you get. But I'm using our So Soft paints today. So to start with, as always, we want to have a little practice. So this is the Elegant Cow Parsley that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using sponge dappers to apply my paint. Because I want to get the nice two colour mix on my block, I want to be relatively precise with where I'm putting the paint. So I'm going to start with a nice coat of the green. And then using the smallest dapper, I'm going to apply the white to the top. And as I always say, don't be so precise with putting on the paint that you're not getting enough on. It's always really important that you're using your sponge dabber flat and you're getting a nice contact between the sponge and the block to ensure you're getting enough paint on. So if your first test print comes out a little bit light, you know to be a little bit heavier with the paint next time. So I'm going to put the block down, give it a wiggle. Now I just ordered off um, my local fabric shop some navy cotton and this is lovely to print on it's a very close color to my zip pouch and my navy tote bag so it's a really good fabric to practice on so see if you can get your hand on anything you know even if you have any old blue bedding or anything that would work really well just something to give a test on. You really need to test on a colour that's representative to the fabric you're going to print so that you can really see how the paints are going to show up. Because it's always very disappointing when you put your block on your fabric item for the first time and it doesn't come out very well. You obviously want to know how it's going to work before you print it. So find fabric that is as close to the item you're printing as possible. 
So this is working really well. You can see I'm just kind of roughly tapping the white on the top of the cow parsley where you've got these sort of blossom bits. And then I've got this lovely green on the bottom. So there we go, another print just to make sure it's printing well. And then we're gonna move on to the zip pouch. So that's lovely. So those have come out really well. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and get my zip pouch on the table ready to print. So I've got my zip pouch on the table. Now I'm printing our largest zip pouch. And you can see on the other side I've got six prints on here. So I'm gonna do the same again. Now I've got a piece of paper on the inside of my pouch just to catch any paint that goes through, but I don't think it will as this is quite a nice heavy canvas. So the paint shouldn't go through. And I've got my printing mat underneath me. Now with this, I don't want to do anything too built up because the edge of my zip pouch has got quite a thick hem. If you print over the edge of that, it gives you a very wobbly print. So I want to keep all of my prints within the inside of the pouch. So as you can see, I've got a border here that I'm not going to go over. So I'm just going to do a couple of random prints all over my zip pouch and I'll show you where I get to. Now, with something like our flat canvas pouches, because it's a little bit of a heavier fabric than the blue practice fabric I was printing onto, we always suggest that when you print, you hold the block down for a little bit longer. So just give it five to 10 seconds touching the fabric, and this will help the thicker fabric absorb the paint and give you a stronger print. And there we have it. So I've got my finished printed zip pouch. Now this looks beautiful, but even though I've used the textile fabric paint, which is four dark fabrics, it's still not super bright, vibrant. So what I'm gonna do is pick out parts of the designs to touch up a little bit, just using a fine paintbrush. This is really gonna bring the design to life. So I'll show you the other side where I've already touched it up. I've added some white dots onto the top of the cow parsley. I've also painted a little bit of the stalk. So I'm gonna do that quickly and show you the difference. So using a fine paintbrush, I'm just going to touch up the stalks using the brush, just adding a little bit more paint to them. You don't need to paint the whole design. I just want to touch up little bits that's going to bring the prints to life slightly more. So you can see how easy and quick that is to do. You just follow the stalk as a guide, just add a, adding a little extra layer of paint just to bring out the detail a bit more. And then using my white paint and either the end of your paintbrush or the fine tip, I'm gonna dip in my paint each time and to the end of my cow parsley, I'm just gonna add a couple of little white dots to each print. And this will just sit on the surface as you're leaving a thicker blob of paint. And this will just dry slightly brighter. Like I said, just bringing your design to life a bit more. Don't go mad, you don't want to end up painting the whole thing, you're just adding little extra bits of detail that are really gonna bring this cow parsley to life. And there we have my finished cow parsley 
zip pouch. So you can really see that those little additions of white dots and the touch up of the stalk has really brought my print to life. And it's just added that little bit of colour that brings the design a bit more forward and into your eyesight. So where I've added those white dots, that paint's quite thick, so that's going to take a little bit of time to dry. So make sure if you are doing both sides, you wait a couple of hours possibly before printing the other side, as you definitely don't want to be smudging those white dots. So on this zip pouch, I've done quite a random, just very light design, you know, not thinking about it too much. But I'm going to show you another item, which is my tote bag, where I've tried to create almost like a cow parsley bush. So I'll show you how I build up that design next. Now, for my tote bag, I wanted to do something slightly different and more make a scene style of block printing. So creating almost like a hedgerow of cow parsley. So it's kind of thicker at the bottom and then lighter at the top. And I also wanted to incorporate a leaf block in there as on cow parsley's, you know, that's what you'd see in the hedgerow. So that's why I've added the use of the leaf block. Now, as our tote bag has got a lot thinner hemmed edge, I'm able to print over the edge slightly as I know that I'm not going to have such a wobbly printing surface, so I'm going to get a better result. So for something like a tote bag, you can try printing over the edge, which kind of makes your design look more professional, I think, when it's not just stuck sometimes within a space. So that's even easier if you're printing plain fabric and then you sew it, you don't have that restriction. So I will speed this bit up, but I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to print all over and then I'm going to touch up the design slightly. So I've got a piece of paper in my bag so the paint's not going to go through. And I'm just going to think about building the scene. So using the cow parsley at different heights. Now I have, of course, practiced this design on practice fabric. So I can only suggest that you do the same to work out how you'd like your design to be. So I feel like that's a good amount of printing for the bottom of my bag, for the more kind of dense um, hedgerow of the cow parsley. And now I'm just going to scatter a few higher up, as obviously there's always different heights with cow parsley, to add a little bit of design to the top of my bag. Now I'm very happy with that for my bag. I don't want to add anything else, but you've certainly got room, you know, maybe even to scatter a, a single seed head or something around, or you could just place more white dots if you felt it needed bringing together more. But I'm very happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same as I did on my zip pouch, and I'm just gonna pick out certain bits of the prints, just to add that little bit of extra paint too, so a few white dots around, which will bring it to life. So here is my finished tote bag with the addition of a couple of painted stalks and some white dots on the top of my cow's parsley, really to bring it to life. So here I have two beautiful printed items inspired by cow parsley. Hopefully this has inspired you to have a go at some cow parsley printing of your own. Now don't forget you can find all of the materials that I've used on our website. We have a category that's called cow parsley printing project or you can find it on our blog page 
and you can have a go at printing your own cow parsley creation. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed this week's printing project.